Cardiff, as you say, haven't hired anyone yet, but Blackpool have. And Blackpool have hired former Cardiff City manager Mick McCarthy to replace Michael Appleton, having parted ways with Michael Appleton uh, last week after we recorded. So, um, George, I think that the Michael Appleton era was a bit of a mess uh, at Blackpool, all in, um, for a few different reasons. And whether you agree or not with the reasons why Blackpool fans were uninspired by the appointment, the reasons that they weren't inspired by the appointment were quite predictable. You could have seen them coming if you were the board. And I feel like the board should have foreseen the problems that might be caused. It's not like Appleton is an unknown quantity when it comes to his kind of reserved character and his unemotional style. Um, It's obviously known that Appleton and Blackpool had a certain past and and you have to think that some, some better due diligence could have been done just on this one part of hiring a manager. There's loads that you think about when you hire a manager. But one part has to be potential relationship with the fan base. It just has to be. And they didn't do that properly, in my opinion. So, I I mean, I always felt it would be a tough job from a stylistic and a a kind of a situational point of view, right? Like we talk about joining a club when they're at a low ebb because the manager before has done a poor job and, and, and things can only get better. That clearly wasn't the case here. I actually went back and found my notes from from my pre-season research spreadsheet where I, for every club in the 72, I'll do pros, I'll do cons, I'll just jot down anything that I'm feeling in, in July. And for Blackpool, I wrote, always concerned when a transformative manager leaves, which is what Critchley had been, especially one with a pretty different style of play to the incoming. I just think they were so much greater than the sum of their parts to such a huge extent and that is hard to achieve and continue. They were so, so competitive, and I'm afraid I think that was down to the manager, not the strength of the squad. They look light at the back, and I don't think Appleton's teams are as good out of possession as some managers, like Critchley, though I might be proven wrong. I just cannot see them matching last season. So not matching last season was going to mean not winning very many football matches and likely being involved in a relegation battle. And when you don't have much credit in the bank from the very beginning, that mixture, that equation, that cauldron that potion is is not a very good one so i don't think anything that's happened basically in the last five months since his appointment has been a surprise but it's been been difficult to to follow it's been difficult to watch the two most important people uh, for blackpool's success last season um were neil critchley and josh bowler and critchley moved on um bowler was there for the first five or six games of, of of the season then moved on Keshi Anderson was probably the second most attacking player, maybe third, um, behind, well, yeah, I mean, with the, the strikers there as well, but two basically key attacking players there um, that Critchley had weren't available to Appleton. As you say, I think culturally it was it was a, a terrible fit from the word go. Appleton, previously appointed by um, the, you know, the man who may should not be named around Blackpool, so being in any way associated to the Oyston era um, is not a good start. And then obviously with, with his with his Named Preston, him within two seconds. Voldemort. Oh, well, I'm not, you know, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a Blackpool right. fan. <laughs> no, I just enjoyed the phrase, well, I, he who must not be named in um, the Oyston era. Yeah, it, it didn't work. I think in hindsight, you know, I remember speaking to, to, to Michael Appleton when we interviewed him before he took the Lincoln job and he said he was going to pick his jobs based on the owners rather than the club. I think with Clive Nates and Lincoln, he did that with some success. I think with Simon Sadler and Blackpool, he probably did that as well, but maybe without looking at the, you know, the wider picture here. And even though I'm fairly sure on a pure footballing level, things would have improved, maybe because the fans had turned the way they had. It was best for all parties for it to, for it to end the way that it did. I cannot say that I love the appointment of Mick McCarthy. Now, coming out, coming out this two ways, as, I think as a Blackpool fan... I can absolutely see why you would. You've got somebody who, you know, frankly is is an absolute legend of the of the game in terms of his his management, and he isn't somebody who, um, you know, his management style, whilst it may great, there's no denying how popular it's been. And I think you t- if you take Ipswich Town as an example, you know, at Ipswich he was an incredibly successful manager who took them to the brink of returning to the Premier League. But by the time he'd left the club, his reputation within a certain group of their fans was so low because of the style of football that was being played, because they were not enjoying going to games anymore. 
And then as soon as he left, things just really unraveled very, very quickly. And those are my two issues here where I think I think Mick McCarthy will definitely keep Blackpool up. I'd be really surprised if he doesn't. I think the squad is, you know, you've got three first team players in Bowler, Tribal and Morgan Rogers. I mean, Penny for Morgan Rogers' thoughts, having signed to, to come and play under my Clapton again. Um, you've got three players there who are going to come straight to the first team and improve them. Um, so you've got a, a better squad. You've got in Mick, a manager who I'm sure will will, will bring out a, an improvement. You know, I've, I've also spoken a lot about the the difficulty of taking a, a bottom six championship job. I think the only way you can really make that work, I guess, is if you get a manager in like, like Mick, who is proven to get the absolute most out of maybe technically limited footballers. You need somebody who is going to be able to get results going onto the onto the football pitch, knowing that your team isn't as good as the as your opposite team. And that is far more in Mick McCarthy's remit and, and his history than it is in Michael Appleton's. And in that case, it works. My issue is more the long-term strategy where, I mean, this is very, very similar situation to what we saw at Middlesbrough and Neil Warnock, where if Mick does what is expected of him and he is able to raise the, the um, you know, the, the performances up to that level and keep them up, I anticipate his contract will be extended longer. But you've just given a four-year deal to Michael Appleton. Prior to that, you've given a two long-term contracts to Neil Critchley. It does feel like a massive shift in strategy here about about what Blackpool are trying to do and what they're trying to be. Chris Badlin, former head of recruitment at Coventry, now head of recruitment at Blackpool, has seemingly played quite a big part in this um, decision. And if that is the case, maybe he is willing to get in Mick, recruit for that style of football and embrace it. And, and if that's the case, then then totally fair enough. But uh, yeah, it feels to me like a, a, a decent short-term appointment, but maybe it should be just that. And I'm not convinced that it, that it necessarily will be. What might be interesting is to remind ourselves of what I think is the most relevant aspect of Mick McCarthy's recent work as a manager when it comes to this exact job. So, um, the, the last job he had was at Cardiff. It ended horrifically. But the only relevant part of that for this current situation is the first five months. Unless McCarthy is appointed full-time in the summer, which has not been, which is not the plan at the moment, and unless he leads them out in the first match of next season, that terrible period from the start of last season till October when he was sacked is just not as relevant as the job he did from January when he arrived to May 2021. So I want to just remind ourselves of that. McCarthy came in in mid-January and they had lost, I think, five in a row under Neil Harris. They started under McCarthy 11 games unbeaten with seven wins. Uh, they ended the season with the best record in the league from the point that McCarthy joined at 1.77 points per game. It was objectively brilliant results from uh, from a sort of mid-season managerial appointment. So what did he do? Well, he shook things up and he did a load of stuff that he was expected to do then and worked very well. And therefore, I'm sure he will expect to do here and will hope that it works very well. Switched to three at the back, went for very, very strong physical types at the back in particular. Within weeks, Cardiff led the league for dual win percentage and aerial win percentage. And it worked as a style at the back. They, their physical dominance was excellent. Flint and Morrison and Curtis Nelson. Uh, but they weren't just that. They were solid. But they scored a lot of goals and they got goals from different areas. They were one of four very direct teams in that season. That was Barnsley under Ishmael. That was Wickham under Ainsworth, Rotherham under Warner and Cardiff under McCarthy. They didn't press that much out of possession. They mostly just got into shape. But they attacked with proper intensity, with speed and with quality. It wasn't boring to watch at that point, albeit it became incredibly difficult to watch the next season. So just transposing that onto the current Blackpool squad, I could see something like... Maxwell in goal or Grimshaw if the fans get their way. I'm obviously hoping that cousin Chris keeps the gloves and the uh, and the armband. Uh, Ekpeteta, Thornley, and then Reese Williams, the current third centre back. But I would expect McCarthy to prioritise getting. He's been oh, has he? called. Well, there you go. I think we can hmm. expect Aidan Flint to join, don't you? Because I don't think he's particularly wanted at Stoke City, um, and Sean Morrison. I would have expected him to join as well had he not joined Rotherham 10 days ago. Uh, I think Connolly and Hus... Curtis Nelson? Yeah, not a bad shout, actually. That's a great shout. 
I think Connolly and Husband will be fine for what McCarthy will want from his his sort of defensive wing backs. I think Dougal and Tribal will be fine for what he wants in that kind of midfield two ball winners. And then in front of of that, he's been pretty flexible before. I could see Bowler having a sort of free role, Medine up top as the target man, and, and probably Yates playing off him. Something like that. Um, my main concern is is goals. Whether they'll be able to replicate that sort of varied. Um, avenue of attack that, that he had for a few months under Cardiff because Medine is not key for more. I don't think the midfield goals are necessarily there and Ekpeteta and Thornley aren't exactly Morrison and Flint trotting up for 15 set pieces a game. So I agree with you. I'd be very surprised if Blackpool go down now this season under Mick McCarthy. So for a five-month appointment, I think it's great. Um, as you said, then what if they do? Will they hold their nerve to not appoint him full-time? Because that will not be part of their plan right now. But that will be tough to do, because if he keeps him up, everyone's going to think he's an absolute legend. So, interesting. 